Okay, hey everybody. Um, thank you so much for coming. Um, our presentation is on like keeping connected as we continue like being here in the fall. Uh, as COVID is definitely still important and it's really important that we're keeping social distancing, uh, but it can be kind of hard to uh, balance that and also wanting to make sure you're having your social interaction. Um, so I'm, my name is Madeline and then Victoria and Isha are also presenting and we're all senior uh, neuroscience majors, so yes. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, and um, we're all mental health ambassadors and uh, as part of UAV and Honors College, so. Okay, so to start off, we're going to talk about some things that you can do while social distancing on campus. Um, some of these you might have done with your friends like over the summer, but we just have some like adjustments to ways you can do it uh, to hang out with people either in person or still on Zoom. Um, go ahead. Great. Um, so the first thing is, do you like Harry Potter and do you like problem solving in games with friends? Um, so something that we came across um, over the summer is there is a Harry Potter themed escape room that you can play online with your friends. It's really fun and basically you're solving a lot of puzzles in order to get out of the room. Or if you just want like a harder one or you're just not a fan of Harry Potter, you can also try this one. Yeah, so another thing is to play some nostalgic games online. As I'm sure y'all have seen, Animal Crossing is popping right now uh, and it can be really fun to play with friends. Uh, in addition, you can play some other games uh, like Webkins, uh, Club Penguin, Pop Tropica. They're all like still games you can play. Uh, over Zoom, you can like share a screen and just have one person play. That could sound boring, but it's actually super duper fun. Um, also, if you're in person, you can just like be across the room playing and chatting and everything. Um, that can be something to just make it a little more fun than just staring at each other from, from a distance. Uh, go ahead, next one. Another thing you can do is visit a park. Being outside is actually a lot safer. Um, we still recommend that you're wearing mask and maintaining distance, but uh, it can be really nice to go take a picnic. So if you want something within walking distance of campus, Railroad Park is gorgeous, just a quick 10 minute walk away. And um, there's some cafes nearby if you wanna get a snack. It's so perfect for picnics or just going on for a walk. Um, and then a short drive away, we've got um, Homewood Central Park, which is about 10 minutes from campus and the Birmingham Botanical Gardens. Uh, the Botanical Gardens is actually free and has gorgeous, gorgeous plants. These are also great places to study uh, outside. Red Mountain Park and Oak Mountain Park are gorgeous state parks that you can go, um, which are respectively, I think 15 minutes and 20 minutes away from campus. Uh, great to just get off campus, um, meet your friends up and have a little social distance outdoor time. All right, and if y'all don't happen to be within a 10 mile radius or don't have a car, um, we've compiled some like apps or games online that you can play while you're on Zoom. So there's family style, which is basically you and your friends will cooperate to put out dishes. Um, Among Us is a game where you and your friends are going to work together in order to repair your spaceship while trying to find the imposter that's aboard. And then COVIDopoly is basically Monopoly, except for it's COVID themed. Um, if you and your friends want to do something a little bit more competitive. All right, so you can also plan a lunch date with your friends. Here are some things you can do while you're social distancing with your friends or with your roommate. So you can have a Netflix party where you all watch the same movie together. You can create a vlog of your day and share it with them. You can make a TikTok together, which is really popular right now. And you can also book or bake or cook the same dish and see who made it better. Most importantly, just remember to be gentle with yourself and others during this time. It's completely okay if you feel like you aren't accomplishing or doing as much as you normally do. Just focus on doing the best you can. Yeah, and so the second half of our presentation is gonna be talking about like, um, keeping up with your friends and like if you realize that maybe there's something off about them or if there's a problem going on like how to approach them and uh to talk with them uh, yeah. 
All right, so step one is to ask the question. So you want to start off and just say, hey, notice you've been a little different recently. Is everything all right? They might be under different kinds of stress or whatever. This is just kind of an opening question to let them know that you're concerned. Um, you're, you want to try to best try your best to keep your tone non-confrontational and of course use whatever language works best for you. Um, you don't need to say these words exactly. So they might respond with something like, yeah, everything is fine. I just need some time to myself to recharge. Um, that's really great. Now you know that everything is all right. If you're not really convinced, maybe wait a bit before trying step one again. On the other hand, if they say, no, I've got a problem and it's really been on my mind the last couple of days. So the automatic question is, what do you do next? Yeah, so if it is more of like just something they need to talk about, letting them vent can actually be really, really be uh, beneficial. Uh, it can reduce stress levels, but it's really important that you're making sure that it is positive venting. Uh, so with positive venting, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the tone is positive. It's more important of like you, the listener, what, what you're doing. Uh, so like actively listening, um, like make sure you're validating what they're saying, uh, being empathetic, like really paying attention to how they feel about it, not necessarily how, how you, like what your reaction is. Um, and finally creating a safe environment. Like if they need to like talk to you about something, like have them make sure maybe you're not paying attention to your phone or it's like you need to move rooms to make it more like safe uh, that you won't be interrupted. Like you as a listener might, uh, might fall on you to have that responsibility to make sure the envir environment is safe. Um, next is validate. I kind of mentioned this a second ago. Validating is their feelings is really important. If they have opened up to you, uh, the one of the worst things you could do would just be like, oh, it's not that bad or, oh, you know, um, something like that. So really um, some examples of how to validate is like, that makes sense. That sounds difficult. I'm sorry you're struggling. Really making sure you're keeping the focus on them. So when your friend finally does open to you, doing so must have been a huge challenge for them. So you really want to let them know that you appreciate them for opening up to you and that you're always there to support them. You can say some things like, thank you for sharing, you're not alone, and I'm here for you. Um, so when your friend is speaking, make sure you're being an active listener and you're engaging with them. This can look a little different depending on the scenario. Like for example, if you're social distancing and you can't speak to them in person, you might be on a video call with them. But whatever the case is, make sure you're nodding and you're showing with your facial expressions that you're engaged in the conversation. And it's always good to rephrase what they're saying to make sure you understand where, they're, where you're coming from. Also, it's really important to create a safe space in which you can both speak to each other freely and you also feel that your conversation will remain private between the two of you. And last but not least, refer. Let them know that there is help available, whether that is on campus or off campus and refer them to appropriate resources. Um, it can sound something like, I think it might be helpful for you to talk to someone. Do you wanna walk or call the counseling center together? UV Counseling Center is currently doing virtual appointments, so that's definitely an option. And we'll also provide a list at the end of this of other resources that you can use. So some things to avoid saying, um, are, I know how you feel. Um, it's really difficult to really know how someone is feeling, although you might have gone through a similar experience. Um, your experience and their experience aren't going to be exactly the same, and how you guys choose to deal with them are probably going to be a little bit different. Um, and the same goes with something like, one time this exact thing happened to me as well. Like, well, I'm sure your friend really appreciates your, like, trying to empathize with them and tell them that they're not alone. Sometimes, they just really want to tell you what's going on with them and remember that you're here to support them. So keep it about them. Yeah, so some other things to keep in mind, it can be really nerve wracking when you like reach out to someone, um, but no one is ever going to be annoyed at you that you're checking up on them. Uh, because you're worried like most likely they'll appreciate it if everything is fine they'll just be like oh thanks for checking in like we're good um but like you reaching out could be the branch that they need uh, next uh you're important too it's great to help your and listen to your friends but make sure you're taking time for yourself as well 
um, yeah, and just, uh, it's really, we just wanted to like drive that point in, uh, that you can't help others unless you're also like your, you know, cup is full that you're taking care of yourself as well. So with taking care of yourself, that, um, with that comes setting boundaries. So setting boundaries keep your relationships from becoming unsafe and they help keep you from suffering from emotional burnout. Having healthy boundaries are key to making sure you feel both mentally and emotionally stable. Um, that being said, here's a great way to start setting some boundaries. You can ask yourself these questions, such as how much support can you actually give your friend at this time? Do you feel comfortable with the way you're being treated currently? What is the best way you both can communicate if a future problem arises? Asking yourself these questions are a good start in identifying your, or your limits in these different relationships. And always remember that your needs are just as important as everyone else's. All right, so please note that the information that we're giving in this presentation isn't for emergency situations. If you really need to talk to someone urgently or you think there's imminent harm, you should definitely dial 911. We've also included a list of um, websites and numbers for you to call, such as the crisis text line, the suicide prevention hotline, the national crisis text hotline, and then we've also included links to student counseling services in the Birmingham Crisis Center. Student counseling services has a huge number of online resources that you can definitely access. Um, and they're really doing a really great job of trying to get that out to the students. If you want more information about that, you can definitely look at the MHA page on Instagram and look at the link in our bio. And these are our sources. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing. Thank you. Um, we have a couple questions, if that's okay with y'all. Um, Allie wants to know, how do you know if you are crossing the line when trying to help a friend with mental health slash suggest resources? So it would probably be based on their reaction. Um, I think that like, as we said in the, in the slide, like reaching out to them and just like, hey, how's it going? A little more detailed than that maybe, but if they are reacting negatively, then just stepping back um, and understanding that people can feel more uncomfortable with that. And then I think if you continue to push, that could be where it's like overstepping boundaries. Okay, and we also have one more in this group chat. Um, Hannah wants to know, what is a good way to approach someone saying that you think they may need professional support? So that's often a really uncomfortable conversation to have. Um, like we said, it's really important to first of all emphasize that you're there for them and you're just talking to them because you're a little bit concerned about what's going on. You want to kind of gauge their openness to having the conversation before you decide to have the conversation. And when you do, just make sure you let them know that like your suggestion is coming out of a place of concern. You're just really worried about them and you're not quite sure if you can do everything that is possible. Thank you for that. Does anyone on this call have any questions for the group? Or any uh, comments on the presentation or anything like that? You can also send them in the chat as well. I was just gonna say that I like, um how there's like a whole plan, but then also like, just know, you know, know that this isn't for an emergency because I know we talked in our self-care presentation about, you know, an emergency situation is very different from just like normal every day, checking up on a friend or doing self-care. And I think it's important to acknowledge like the difference between just having a bad day and being like in a crisis and the difference between how to get help for that. Definitely. Okay. Okay, well, thank you all so much for presenting again. It was very helpful. Um, if you're interested in any of our other events for MIJ, we do have others. On Mondays, we work with the Artists in Medicine program. So at 2.30 on this Zoom, we will be presenting um, different art forms that help with your mental health. Um, this week, we have Haley Black presenting for us, and she'll be um, specializing in music. And also next week, we have another presentation on Friday. 
that y'all are welcome to come to. And also just a reminder to follow us on our social media. Um, our Instagram is at UABMHA, and we also have a YouTube at UAB Mental Health Ambassadors. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to Dr. Lindsay or Mayor Sarah Avery, and we'll be happy to you know, answer any of your questions. Um, also, <laughs> this semester we will be having training sessions for new mental health ambassadors. They will be happening all this semester, so make sure to check out our social media for all the details on that if you're interested in becoming a mental health ambassador and having a similar presentation like the one you just saw. But thank you again, everyone, for coming. It's very much appreciated, and have a good day.